Hello everyone and welcome to this research update. The topic that we're going to be talking about today is on the detection of coronavirus in stool samples from COVID-19 patients. And so we're going to uh, specifically review the key evidence in terms of detection of this virus in stool samples as well as the potential implications. So let's start off by just reviewing a few of the key studies. So this is one of the first initial studies uh, that was reported in terms of detecting uh, the coronavirus, the novel coronavirus, in stool samples from COVID-19 patients. Uh, so this is this first study came out before the virus was officially named. Uh, so they referred to it at that time as 2019 NCoV, which stands for novel coronavirus. It's been since renamed to SARS-CoV-2 to differentiate the virus from the virus that causes uh, SARS. Um, so again, that's sars CoV-2 is the official uh, current name for the virus. So the title here is Molecular and Serological Investigation of 2019 NCoV Infected Patients, Implication of Multiple Shedding Routes. Uh, so just going through a few of the key points uh, from their abstract, i.e. the summary of this study. Uh, so they first talk about how uh, here in the first highlighted part, many coronaviruses can also be transmitted through oral fecal route by infecting intestines. Uh, so we know from previous studies that the viruses that are involved in SARS and MERS as well, so those are coronaviruses, have been shown to actually be transmitted in many cases through the fecal-oral route. Of course, the primary route is through respiratory um, infection, uh, but also it's thought that fecal-oral route may be another important route for transmitting the virus. Uh, they go on to say that we found the presence of 2019 NCoV in anal swabs and blood as well, and more anal swab positives than oral swab positives at a later stage of infection, suggesting shedding and thereby transmitted through fecal oral route. Uh, they go on to say our report provides a cautionary warning that 2019 NCoV may be shed through multiple routes. So again, this is one of the first studies that was published uh, on detecting uh, this new coronavirus involved in COVID-19 in stool samples. This next study is titled Detection of SARS-CoV-2 in Different Types of Clinical Specimens. So in this study, they looked at uh, 205 different patients that were confirmed to have COVID-19 and collected a total of over 1,000 specimens uh, from, uh, for example, lung fluid, uh, nasal swabs, etc., including fecal samples. And then they reported the overall percentage of positive samples based on uh, the total that were tested. Uh, so listed here in the second highlighted area, uh, they give the results for all these different sample types. So you can see that bronchoalveolar lavage fluid, uh, so that's deep lung sampling, showed the highest positive rates. So 14 out of 15 that were sampled, or 93% rate, followed by sputum, so that had a positive rate of 72%, nasal swab, 63%, fibrobronchoscope brush biopsy, 46%, pharyngeal swabs at 32%, uh, and then feces at 29%. Uh, blood uh, levels were, uh, positivity levels were very low at 1%. Uh, so the vast majority of patients did not have detectable virus in blood. And then none of the 70, uh, 72 urine specimens that were tested uh, were, were tested for as positive. So again, um, quite a big difference across the different samples with the highest positive rates for respiratory samples, uh, but also notably that uh, fecal samples were also fairly high as well at 30%. And then they discussed some of the conclusions. Uh, actually, here's the first the data uh, presented in table form. Uh, so again, the different types of samples are across uh, the top row. So there's the bronchoalveolar lavage fluid, et cetera. Uh, and also you can see for the fecal samples, uh, 44 uh, out of the patients tested positive uh, for a rate of 29%. Um, these are their key take-home points from their discussion section of this publication. Uh, so they basically talk about how lower respiratory tract samples were most often testing positive for the virus. Importantly, the live virus was detected in feces, implying that SARS-CoV-2 may be transmitted by the fecal route. Uh, they go on to say transmission of the virus by respiratory and extra respiratory routes may help explain the rapid spread of the disease. In addition, testing of specimens from multiple sites may improve the sensitivity 
and reduce false negative test results. So moving on to the next study, this one is titled Evidence for Gastrointestinal Infection of SARS-CoV-2. Uh, so as I discuss here in their results section, among all of the 73 hospitalized patients that were infected with SARS-CoV-2, uh, so they were confirmed to have the virus, 39 or 53%, including 25 male, 14 female patients tested positive for SARS-CoV-2 RNA in stool. And again, this is an RNA, not a DNA virus. Uh, so that's where they're uh, detecting it at the RNA level. Uh, they go on to say the duration time of positive stool results range from 1 to 12 days. Furthermore, 17 or 23% of patients continued to have positive results in stool after showing negative results in respiratory samples. So this is one of the consistent findings that we're seeing in many of these studies, and we'll see a few more examples um, in this update today. Uh, of this phenomenon where it can be detected, the virus can be detected for a prolonged period in many patients uh, in stool samples, uh, suggesting that they may actually be infective for a longer period of time uh, than when they test negative in respiratory samples. Uh, so they go on to say in this article, uh, therefore we strongly recommend uh, that our RRT-PCR testing, which stands for Reverse Transcriptase Real-Time or Quantitative PCR Testing, for SARS-CoV-2 from feces should be performed routinely in patients with SARS-CoV-2 and that transmission-based precautions for hospitalized patients with SARS-CoV-2 should continue if feces test uh, results are positive by RT-PCR testing. So again, this is confirming once again that it is detected in fecal samples of many patients for an extended period and that monitoring the presence of the virus in stool may be very important for informing management of patients, uh, especially during the recovery phase. Moving on to the next study example, this one is titled The Presence of SARS-CoV-2 RNA in Feces of COVID-19 Patients. Uh, so this is one of the studies that we're going to dive into some of the details here so you can get a feel for some of the data. So in this study, they included 42 hospitalized COVID-19 patients from Wuhan, China, with lab-confirmed SARS-CoV-2, and this was vi via pharyngeal swab samples and RT-PCR confirmation. So they collected pharyngeal, stool, and urine samples throughout the duration of these patients' hospitalization, as well as their recovery. And they found that overall 67% tested positive in stool, uh, but that this was not actually associated statistically with illness severity. They also noted that about 19% of patients had GI symptoms, and again, this was not associated with stool detection of viral RNA. Uh, so that's a little unclear, and this is fairly consistent with other studies that have not found a significant association in terms of GI symptoms, which actually are fairly common uh, among COVID-19 patients, uh, but they are, so far have not found a st uh, statistically significant association with the detection of uh, virus in stool. Uh, so that's a little unclear at this point. They also looked at median duration between the onset of symptoms and then lab confirmation in samples. Uh, so looking at the pharyngeal swab samples, the average uh, delay or duration between uh, onset of symptoms and when pharyngeal samples uh, were positive for virus was about 6.5 days on average with a range of three to seven days overall. Uh, for stool samples, the average delay or duration uh, from onset of symptoms until detection in stool was 11 days with a range from seven to 13. So definitely significantly longer than pharyngeal swabs. So in general, uh, positivity in stool uh, seems to be somewhat delayed compared to pharyngeal swabs. Uh, but as we'll see, uh, positivity in stool also is extended much longer than for pharyngeal swabs. Uh, and that's uh, indicated here in this next section. So duration of detection of viral RNA in stool uh, by different categories. So they broke patients into three categories, uncomplicated cases, mild cases, and then severe cases. So for the uncomplicated cases, uh, the average duration uh, where patients were positive in stool samples was uh, about nine days on average. For mild cases, the average was around eight with a range of 4.5 to 14 days. And then for severe cases, the average was around 14 days uh, for being detected as positive in stool. The range of 9.5 to 18 days. 
Uh, they go on to say that overall, 64.3% remain positive in stool for at least seven days with a mean, uh, that's the mean, and then the range is six to 10 days after pharyngeal swabs were negative. Uh, so this, again, is another consistent observation among these studies is that uh, detection in stool, uh, so basically stool samples that are positive, uh, is, goes on for a period much longer than when respiratory samples are positive. Uh, so that's, again, raising the concern of possible fecal-oral contamination as a possible route of transmission of the disease uh, when patients are uh, re in the recovery phase. They go on to say in this research article uh, that in summary, our study results suggested the presence of SARS-CoV-2 RNA in feces of COVID-19 patients, and more importantly, viral shedding from feces might remain for a long time after negative conversion in pharyngeal swabs, suggesting that fecal oral transmission may serve as an alternative infection route for SARS-CoV-2. More attention should be paid to hand hygiene and the disinfection of patients' vomitus and feces, as well as the sewage of hospitals and residences living, um, residences living with COVID-19 patients. Uh, so again, this is really emphasizing some of the key implications of detection of SARS-CoV in RNA, especially uh, the presence uh, seems to be extended much longer than it is in the respiratory samples. So this next study is titled Prolonged Presence of SARS-CoV-2 Viral RNA in Fecal Samples. And just a few of the study highlights here to give you a feel for this study. Uh, so COVID-19 patients uh, were hospitalized in China with SARS-CoV-2 confirmed by two sequential respiratory samples that were positive. Uh, so in this case, a little bit more stringent requirements for being considered positive. Uh, respiratory and fecal samples were collected every one to two days from a total of 74 patients until the patient showed two sequential negative results. Uh, then they stopped sampling. So 55% overall were positive for SARS-CoV in stool. Uh, so a little bit lower than last study, but still a fairly high percentage. Respiratory samples remain positive for an average of 15.4 days from the onset of symptoms. And then fecal samples remain positive for an average of 27.9 days. Uh, so again, much longer than for the respiratory samples. One patient uh, actually was positive for virus in stool for 33 consecutive days after the respiratory samples became negative. So for some patients, this period of time can be very extended. And that's, again, why fecal monitoring may be very important for helping to prevent transmission. Uh, they go on to say that presence of GI symptoms was not associated with viral status in stool samples. So again, that's another consistent finding with other studies. Disease severity was not associated with extended duration of viral RNA in stool. Again, consistent with other studies so far. Uh, so this is a very interesting uh, and informative figure from that uh, publication showing the results uh, for uh, respiratory samples and also stool samples uh, from these uh, patients that were included in the study. Uh, so I'll just show you the, enlarge the key here so you can see what the different colors mean. Uh, so mostly focusing on the first few, so the throat swab positive period is indicated in red, and then the positive period for uh, detection in feces is in uh, kind of the yellow-orange. Uh, the triangle, um, the white triangle, uh, indicates symptom onset. Uh, and then uh, the other one we kind of want to look at is uh, the green uh, plus, which indicates when they were discharged from the hospital. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at this real quick. And so you can see there's a lot of variation among the different patients in terms of how long they were positive, both for respiratory, again in red, and then the fecal samples in orange. Uh, and again, typically they tested positive in respiratory samples earlier than when they became positive in fecal samples overall. Uh, but then you can see, especially for the patients near the top of this, that the period where they were positive in fecal samples was quite extended compared to respiratory samples. And that was one of the major indicators they used uh, to dis decide when they could be discharged from the hospital. Uh, so you can see those green uh, pluses indicated uh, in most cases after uh, they were negative uh, for two samples in terms of detection uh, fecal samples. So here's a quote from the article that summarizes some of their uh, observations and implications. So they say here, we observed that for over half of patients 
their fecal samples remain positive for SARS-CoV-2 RNA for a mean of 11.2 days after respiratory tract samples became negative for the SARS-CoV-2 RNA, implying that the virus is actively replicating in the patient's GI tract and that fecal oral transmission could occur after viral clearance in the respiratory tract. And then they go on to say, therefore, routine stool sample testing with real-time RT-PCR is highly recommended after the clearance of viral RNA in a patient's respiratory samples. Strict precautions to prevent transmission should be taken for patients who are in hospital or self-quarantined if their fecal samples test positive. So that brings me to this last article, uh, which is a review article looking at a number of these studies that have been published to date. So there have been quite a few, uh, and this is looking at um, all of the studies that were published uh, by the time this review was done. Uh, So they summarize that here in their methods section where they say, we reviewed gastrointestinal features of and fecal test results in COVID-19 from case reports and retrospective clinical studies relating to digestive system, the, the digestive system published since the outbreak. Uh, and they're just going right to their conclusions uh, from looking at all these different studies. Gastrointestinal symptoms are common in patients with COVID-19 and had an increased prevalence in the later stage of the recent epidemic in China. Uh, and then importantly, SARS-CoV-2 enters gastrointestinal epithelial cells, so there is some evidence of that now. Uh, and the feces of COVID-19 patients are potentially infectious. Uh, So that's really the major concern of this uh, discovery that uh, COVID-19 virus, the SARS-CoV-2, can be detected in the feces of many patients for an extended period of time. So that brings me to the summary of uh, from this research update. Uh, So the first point, SARS-CoV-2 RNA has been detected in stool of approximately 30 to 70 percent of COVID-19 patients. So again, that range depends on uh, the specific studies that were done. Uh, Overall, though, that suggests that a fairly high percentage of patients do have detectable virus uh, in stool samples. And they also detected the virus in stool samples for days up to several weeks after respiratory samples became negative. And then positive results in stool have not been significantly correlated with GI symptoms, at least so far. So again, they're looking at, in most cases, fairly small studies. So there's not a lot of statistical power in these studies. Uh, So it may end up that uh, there may be a connection, but so far that has not been shown statistically. Uh, Stool detection alone is not currently considered diagnostic, but may provide additional confirmation of infection. So again, we showed uh, the one study that looked at various different samples, uh, both respiratory samples, stool samples, blood, and urine, uh, and found that uh, certain respiratory samples had the highest positive rate overall, Uh, again, with stool being significant uh, and may be used in some cases as an additional confirming factor for infection. But most importantly, stool testing has been recommended for monitoring potential infectivity of patients that are recovering from COVID-19, again, because of this potential for fecal oral transmission. That brings us to the end of this research update. Thank you for listening. And if you'd like to learn more about stool testing for SARS-CoV-2, Go to diagnosticsolutionslab.com where clinicians can find information about how to order the test as well as technical information about uh, coronavirus stool testing. So again, that's it, diagnosticsolutionslab.com. And thank you for listening.